This is our fifth and I think final session on verses 15 to 16, and I want to focus on what is justifying faith. We ourselves are Jews by nature and not from Gentile sinners, knowing that a person is not justified by works of the law, but through faith. So this is the key word this time. In Jesus Christ. So knowing that a person is justified by faith, we also have believed. And I put the Greek here just so you could see that the stem is the same in Greek with the word faith and the word believed. We don't have a English word that turns faith into a verb. We don't faith anything. <laughs> we have faith, but the Greeks do. They can turn a noun for faith into the verb faith. So don't think believing and faith are different acts of the heart. They're not. It's the same basic word. So we believe, we had faith in Jesus Christ in order that we might be justified by faith in Christ and not by works. So works, works, um, and works are contrasted with faith, believe, faith. That's significant because faith in its nature is going to be the opposite of working. That's why historically so many have defined faith as a resting in Jesus Christ for what God is for us in him. So, Father, as we ponder now the nature of justifying faith, faith which justifies, faith being the instrument by which we are put right with you so that we don't ever have to be afraid again that you would be against us, but only for us. Oh, show us the nature of this glorious reality called faith. So the first thing I would observe here is that faith involves a knowing, right? And, and this is not at all controversial. Almost all historic efforts to get at the nature of faith and what's in it have said there's a, there's a knowing element or component in it. There's an assenting element. There's a trusting element in it. And right there is the clear statement, knowing the gospel. A person isn't justified by works. A person is justified by faith. Knowing that glorious truth is essential to having faith. If you don't have any knowledge of it, you don't have this. So faith then assents to it. You can hear that in this verb. We have believed. We, we move from a knowing to a kind of heart acting, heart committing, heart yielding, heart receiving. And that is a together what is the essence of it, essence of saving faith. I've, I've uh, copied down here the Westminster Shorter Catechism definition so that we can uh, ponder what's involved in trusting and assenting in this faith that justifies. What is faith in Jesus Christ? Faith in Jesus Christ is a saving grace. That means it's a gift. And they would go to Ephesians 2, 8, and 9 to show that. Whereby we receive and rest upon Him. Receiving Christ resting on Christ alone for salvation. Now, salvation is a massive word. It includes all kinds of present and future things that we will experience that are our life. And so it adds, as he is offered to us in the gospel. In other words, every way that Christ is offered to us in the gospel, faith receives. Faith doesn't reject half of this. 
Fade doesn't say, oh, I like the part in John. I like the part over in First Peter, but I don't like the part in James. I don't like the part in Romans. No, faith receives Christ as he is offered to us in the gospel. I would say in the word of God. And I don't think that's a contradiction here. I think Christ offered to us in the word of God, offered to us, that is, as a gift. That's what we receive and rest upon. All that Christ is, or you could say all that God is for us in him. You can see that receiving idea here in chapter 1, verse 9. As we have said before, so now I say again, if anyone is preaching to you a gospel contrary than the one you received, when, a, when good news comes, faith receives the good news and rests in it. Now, I want to draw out one more aspect of faith and ask, when you, when you say receive, and you receive as what? Well, as everything he is in the gospel. So I gathered a few just from Galatians. He gave himself for our sins. That is, we have forgiveness because of him. He delivers us from the present evil age. We have rescue from Satan and all the powers of this age. He, he gives us grace. He achieved good news for us. We are justified through him. He loved us, gave himself for us. In him we have the blessing of Abraham. In him we are sons of God. In him we are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise. Because of him we are free. For freedom, Christ has set us free. So all of this we receive. That's what faith does. Faith receives this. When faith hears, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. When faith hears these glorious gifts to us in Christ, faith receives them and rests in them. And I just want to underline that it receives them as precious. It receives them as a treasure. Let me show you why I say that on the basis of what Paul says. So let's look at 2 Corinthians 4, 4 to 7 to see that we are to receive Christ as a treasure. The God of this world has blinded the minds of unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. So unbelievers cannot see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, the image of God. But believers experience this, verse 6, for God, who said that light shone out of darkness, has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. So we can see it and we believe it, we receive it, we rest in it. And then he says, but we have this treasure. And this treasure means the light of the knowledge of the glory of God embraced. We have this treasure in jars of clay to show that the surpassing power belongs to God and not to us. And so, I love to call attention to the fact that saving faith or justifying faith, when it receives all these glorious works of Christ and these dimensions of his blessing that he purchased for us, we receive them as valued, as precious, as treasure. One more passage to look at to underline the relationship between faith and treasuring. Whatever gain I had, I counted as loss. I counted as loss for the sake of Christ. So I count them as loss in order to have Christ. Indeed, I count everything as loss, as the negative counting as loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. So there's the treasure. The surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, 
For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish. Count it as loss. Count everything as loss. Count them as rubbish. In order that I might gain Christ. That's the goal. Have Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from law, but that which comes through faith. So we have Christ, and we have Christ as our righteousness through faith, but we also have him gaining Christ as our righteousness by means of accepting him as our surpassing treasure, the surpassing treasure of knowing Christ. We, we do all this rejecting of the world and all this treasuring of Christ in order that I may gain Christ. So this is called through faith, and it's called having, accepting, receiving the worth of Jesus Christ. So those are my reasons for saying that when I hear faith, believe, and faith here in Galatians 2.16, I hear not only that we receive him, rest upon him, and all that he is when he's offered to us in the gospel or in the word of God, but I hear receive him and rest upon him as a treasure. Or you might say, it's a treasuring receiving. It's a treasuring resting. Saving faith never receives Christ as a matter of indifference, a matter of boredom, a matter of mere expediency. Saving faith embraces Christ as our supreme treasure, and thus as a receiving grace that does no works for God, no works for God, no works for God. We are put right in an instant by our welcoming, our receiving of Jesus Christ as our treasured Savior and Lord and all that he is for us in the gospel.